Welcome, dear doctors. Today, we're going to talk about some very well-known counter effects in orthodontics and how we can turn them to our advantage. You, orthodontist, if a friend smiles at you like that, or if you can see his peroreal area at rest looking like this. Or again, if you accidentally look at her profile, you would immediately think she should undergo orthognatic surgery and you will start seeing her as a patient trying to get some frontal and profile pictures when you take selfies together. You will just look at her lips and chin while she talks to you and your friendship will soon come to a dramatic end. Well, if that friend would eventually become your patient, you could see something very close to this while studying the case. The main problem is skeletal, and the open bite comes from a hyperdivergent mandible and a bad functional habit. It's clear that if she wants to improve her face, aside from her bite, she will need surgery. But she refuses it. And she also refuses the placement of mini screws. So, what's left? Extractions. They are useful for a bite closing mechanic and will allow incisor to lose torque during space closure. Now, we know closure of the extraction space should always be done on hard arch wires. If you have a normal curve as path, and you try to close extraction spaces on soft arch wires, maybe with a power chain, you will end up with the so-called roller coaster effect, resulting in a reverse pair and an uncontrolled loss of frontal torque. Now, let's suppose you don't have a normal spare. Maybe your patient has a great open bite and a marked upper curve of spare. If we start closing extraction spaces on soft arch wires, we should expect the same dental movements of anterior torque loss. In this case, that could be useful. We start off with a 013 Q night eye and light elastics going from lower cuspids to upper cuspids to get the lower ones back in arch. A month later, we add four lace bags derived from the MBT technique. They're always useful when closing extraction spaces. At three months, we start off with second class elastics that mesialize lower bicuspids and distalize upper cuspids on a 016 Q night eye. A month later, since I'm losing too much torque on lateral segments, I place palatal elastics, which express the same sagittal forces while also increasing the torque of the teeth they are applied to. At seven months, we engage a 14 by 25 and we start using power chains along with second class elastics. And finally, at eight months from the beginning of the treatment, we have solved our open bite and we are on an 18 by 25 Q night eye. At this point, we've planned the curvus pair and we've almost closed the extraction spaces. Now, we have plenty of time to concentrate on finishing the case. The point is, sometimes the roller coaster effect can help. Just think about it.